Well, greetings from St. Andrew Presbyterian Church. Uh, we're here in my office today because uh, it's Sunday morning and the handbell choir is, is meeting in the sanctuary. But we wanted to give this recording of some of our worship service so that those of you who could not be here could be with us uh, in spirit and still benefit from scripture and sermon and prayer. So thank you for watching this video and uh, we hope to see you soon in person. The New Testament lesson today comes from John chapter 4. It's, it's a long lesson, but it's, it's a neat story, so try to stay listening as with this long listen, lesson. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. Now the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink. You would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Well, uh, once again, we're in my office here at St. Andrew Presbyterian Church. Uh, we're not in the sanctuary because people are practicing getting ready for worship. And as we uh, plan for these scripture readings and prayers, uh, you'll be seeing more than just my face. You'll have more people reading and doing other things. But just this is our first time on Facebook, so we're hoping to try out the technology, make sure it works, and give you uh, a little bit of a worship experience wherever you are. So we just heard from uh, the Gospel of John, the woman at the well. And it's a very well-written story, I think, because uh, the way the story is written, everything is wrong with this encounter between Jesus and this woman. Everything in Jewish society, every rule is broken. Uh, Jesus, uh, an individual man, is, is alone with an individual woman. He's not married to. You know, men and women should not be doing that. Uh, she is not Jewish. And not only is she not Jewish, she's Samaritan. And it's in, you know, the two religious groups that especially did not like each other because they were so similar, but just different enough to really hate each other. And Jesus, Jesus makes it very clear in, in, the, in this reading that there are theological differences, there are belief differences between the Jews and the Samaritans that separate them, and those are serious differences. Not only is she a woman and a Samaritan, she is also a woman who is living in, in violation of a lot of religious laws. She has been uh, mul married multiple times, she's living with a man who's not her husband. In every way, she is not an acceptable person, you know, in, in Jewish society. And yet, Jesus, uh, seems to go out of his way to spend time with her and talk about her, learn about her life, uh, and talk about theology with her, talk about God. I mean, talk about important things with this woman who is so different from him in so many ways. And that's, I think, a message to us. A lot of times we shy away from people who look different, uh, people who maybe are more poor than us, who live on the street. We're, we're kind of worried about them. We're afraid of them. Different cultures, different languages. There's all kinds of talk in our nation about who can be on our soil and who can't be and who's good enough, who's not good enough. And in this story, Jesus seems to be very, very carefully saying to us, very clearly saying to us, uh, there's no rule, no rule uh, that you can break that will not make, that will, that will keep God away from you, that will keep the love of Jesus away from you. And as the church, that's an important lesson for us to hear, that there are rules out there, there are social norms, uh, there are laws of different nations, 
but we're governed by a greater law, and that's the law of love and acceptance and listening to others and finding common ground even across borders and theological differences and ancient enemies. All those borders can be crossed if we look at someone else in love. And that's something, something we have to listen to very carefully. The story I, I want to tell in the sermon is a, a, a great example, a modern example of that. And it's the story of a man named uh, Ralph Waldo Green. Uh, P.D. Green. He, was, uh, he grew up in Washington, D.C. in tough times. Uh, Washington was becoming a more of an urban center, more poverty, more violence, and P.D. Green was part of all that. He was in trouble as a kid. Uh, he went off and joined the army, went to Korea, and eventually left the army because of uh, heroin use. He came back to Washington, D.C., and within a few years, he was in jail for armed robbery. So he's been in trouble, been on drugs, left the military because of drug use, uh, you know, went to the extreme of robbing somebody with a weapon, he's now in jail. So clearly, like the Samaritan woman, uh, P.D. Green is someone normally we might not like, we might have some reservations about. In jail, uh, one, someone mails him a, a record by, uh, oh, I don't have my notes with me, uh, by uh, Sam, Sam uh, Cook. Sam Cook. He, uh, Sam Cook was famous for uh, a beautiful voice, a lot of popular music. He also sang sacred music. He also sang gospel music. And he's one of the first people who was very successful at both. And he really understood both worlds. And now the record uh, P.D. Green Gut was a secular song, but it had a lot of hope in it. And it really you know, spoke to him in a way that a gospel song would not have spoke to him. And so he was really impressed that the Sam Cook character could live in both worlds and speak to both worlds. And he, he got the idea that he would like to bring this kind of hope and optimism to other people. And so the, the prison had a radio station. And so Petey volunteered to be a DJ. And so he kind of learned how to do DJ stuff and trying to put a positive message out to the other prisoners. Well, he finally got out of jail and someone he met in jail had a relative in the radio business in Washington, D.C. And so Petey decided, you know, I'm going to go and see if I can become a real DJ in the real world. So he talked to these upper middle class, you know, white owners of the radio station, and they were not interested in an ex-convict at all. But the problem they had was that uh, their audience was changing. The music, the formats they were playing on their radio station were not as popular because uh, as more and more African Americans were listening, uh, more and more poverty, just their white middle class sensibilities were not appealing to these people. And so eventually, although they didn't want to give Petey Green a job because he was an ex-convict and kind of a scary person to them, they began to realize maybe he was the kind of voice they needed on their radio station to win a new audience. And so they hired him and he went on the radio in Washington DC and really was able to reach out to the communities in, in that, time, that time period, 1960s. Uh, a lot of things were going on. And so Petey Green was on the, on, the, on the airwaves, a popular DJ, when the tragedy of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. happened in April of 1968. The, uh, the very politically conscious people of Washington, D.C., poor people, but who had he heard that message of hope coming from Martin Luther King Jr. and the civil rights movement, uh, they were outraged. They were literally out of their minds. And they started rioting. They started burning storefronts and tearing things up, tearing up their own neighborhood. It was, it was really a kind of anger, you know, bordering on insanity. And uh, it was because they, they had this message of hope, this nonviolent message of hope that was spreading across the nation, spreading across the world, and it was violently taken away from them through the killing of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And the, so Peter Green was out on the streets trying to ca calm people down. He, he was a local well-known DJ. He went out there trying to calm people down. The people on the radio station, the owners of the radio station, realized they needed to do something. And the only person they had who could talk to these people was Petey Green. So they went out on the streets, found him, convinced him, look, you can talk to a few people out in the streets. If you get on the airwaves, you can talk to thousands, millions of people. So they convinced him to come in 
and use the radio to try to calm people down. And, and over, overnight, he really did. He kind of stopped the riots. His calming voice, his, his message of hope and optimism, uh, not retreating from any of the civil rights you know, issues, but saying we, you know, we can't use violence and destruction of our own community to achieve these things. It really helped calm things down and, and, and to rein in the violence and to end that, that insane night in Washington, D.C. Uh, I bring up this story because you know, we don't always know who's the good person and who's the bad person in life. You know, from all of our measurements, Petey Green, uh, you know, drug user, armed, dangerous criminal, ex-convict, so many things about him were problematic. But it was that, that, that rule-breaking, uh, often inappropriately speaking, he, he understood the people in, in a certain way of living, and they understood him, and they, he, had, he could build a trust, he could build a bridge to people that other people could not communicate with. And so all of his mistakes, all of the bad things about him ended up being the exact thing that was needed to bring peace and, and, and justice and order back to a community in a time of crisis, in a time of grief. So the message is, I think, as we talk about Petey Green, talk about the Samaritan woman at the well, you don't know and I don't know who the good people are. Uh, there are people out there who may not look like the good person to you, but maybe God is using them. Maybe God is training them for what they will need to do. And, and a lot of times, you know, Petey Green couldn't have done it by himself. Those wealthy, upper-middle-class white people had to trust him enough to invite him in. And so I think the message is we all have to work together to find the goodness in the world, to reach out to more people. And there's not enough of that in our lives, in our society, in our nation, in our world. We need people who, are, who have that courage to reach out to somebody new and find out what is good in that person and use it to bring peace and love to the world. Uh, there are Petey Greens in your life, in your family. Uh, there are women like this Samaritan woman, she became the first evangelist. She is the first person to go out and tell people the good news of Jesus. For all the things that were wrong with her, she is the first person to go out and spread the good news about this person offering forgiveness, a bridge across cultures, eternal life, offering so much to this world. The church has a lot to offer. We have a lot of good things in this world, but we need to reach the people who need those things. And a lot of times, you and I don't know how to reach across that gap. We don't know how to reach those people. But maybe we know somebody who does. And if we were nicer to that person, if we were more loving, more opening, more accepting, if we listened more, we would have those connections to bring all the gifts we have in the world to other people. And then, also, when we're in need, which we're often in need, we're, we're as sinful as anyone else, we're as needy as everyone else. We're all going to be sick. We're all going to die at some point. We're all weak. When we're in need, if we have those bridges open, we'll get what we need as well. And that's the beautiful thing about the, these stories is that they teach us how to be more loving of other people and how to accept the love of other people. So keep Petey Green in your minds, there's a good a movie about him called Talk To Me. It's rated R, so not for young kids. Uh, Talk To Me is a good movie about that incident in Washington, D.C. There's also a PBS documentary uh, called uh, Adjust Your Color about Petey Green. Uh, that might, you might want to look into. But keep in mind, God has a use for all of us. And that's good news for everybody. Amen.